Hey there again folks, welcome back to Remember Eleven, The Age of Infinity. Last time we got sort of an ending. I was very confused and uh, uh, with uh, Mr. Dawson's help I found out that this was the wrong choice that I missed. Or, this was the wrong choice I missed what? This was the one where I messed up on. Stupid math screwing me up. Uh, 66 minutes. 1008 to 10. Uh, 908 to 1024 is not 66 minutes. I guess I just assumed that since he was talking about 66 minutes, that both of them that he put at me were going to be 66 minutes, but duh, should have looked at it closer. 802, Kukuro and I traded bodies for the first time. She and I then woke up at Sphia and at the shelter cabin, respectively. 908 is when the second transfer occurred, returning my consciousness to Sphia. To be more accurate, it's Sphia that returned to El Sagi Island from Mount Akira. Incidentally, these two instants, isn't there something strange about them? Let's start thinking about what happened on the 14th from 611 to 717. Is this... Okay, this is all different. An interval of 66 minutes. I was at the shelf cabin then, anxious about my body being controlled by Kokoro. I was worried sick about her, wondering if she'd managed to run away from Inamoto. See, it's strange, weird even. Wasn't I only allowed to stay at the shelf cabin for 33 minutes? Of course, the same goes for Kokoro. She can only stay at Sphia for 33 minutes. In spite of that, the cameras recorded my body moving without my consciousness for a good 66 minutes. Certainly not a problem with the time counter on screen. The records really are 66 minutes long. Major point here is that the statement Kokoro can only stay at Sphia for 33 minutes is irrefutable. We measured it several times, so I have no doubts about this. Which means, since Kokoro was already at Sphia at 6:11, her consciousness separated from my body 33 minutes after at 6:44 at the latest. But then, from 6:44 to 7:17, who the hell was controlling my body? Let's examine the records once again. 6.44 on the 14th is shown to be the moment Inamoto was swinging in an eye, aiming at my throat. Right after it, Hattori rams right into Inamoto, causing him to drop the knife. Which means that Inamoto's murder, as well as the overblown damage to his body, took place sometime between 6.44 and 7.17. Personality in control of my body during this time gap is the culprit. So that Fuyukawa Kokoro has a reasonable al alibi. She can only be at Sphia for 33 minutes, and Inamoto died after her 33 minute time limit. Therefore, it's impossible for Kokoro to be the criminal. Fuyuko Kokoro is innocent. The same considerations apply to the events on the 11th from 8.02 to 9.08. At 8.02, Kokoro was trans transported to Sphia. 33 minutes after, at 8.35, her consciousness ought to have left my body. As a matter of fact, I woke up at Sphia at 9.08. From 8.35 to 9.08, again, there's a gap. <laughs> Thinking about it carefully, this mysterious time lag has accompanied every transfer up until now. In 10.24 on the 11th, for example, as Fia having been transported to Mount Akakura due to the third transfer, Kokoro jumped, surprised by the sound of the breaking cups. Then 11.30, a fourth transfer occurred, and I regained consciousness in the bathtub. There are no cameras in the bathroom, but there was one in my room. I know the fourth transfer occurred at 11.30 because the camera inside the room recorded Hattori's sudden metamorphosis. She turned into a butterfly. I'll touch on the subject of Hattori later. The third at 10.24, the fourth at 11.30. Again, a 66 minute gap in between. If we assume Kokoro was in control for half that time, then what about the other half? Yes, as a thought, a 33 minute gap is also present there. Is any further explanation required? The gap always tags along with our transfers. Nevertheless, my body definitely isn't empty during the remaining 33 minutes. It's very clear that another personality slips into it. A third personality. Can't for the life of me guess who they are. I was very much thinking kids, but. I don't know about that now, because uh, Santoru, uh, his past self, I don't know if that's what I should call it, 
He's pretty crazy. So maybe he was switching. Again, I'm not. I don't know. Maybe he has. He says something about transplanted memories or something. Maybe the consciousness that's in him now. It's not the consciousness that really goes in that body, but he gets transferred out of the body. So his normal self actually. I don't know if normal would be the right way to call it. None of this is really normal, to be honest. His uh, original consciousness comes loose and he's like, I got a stab! I got a stab! Just like the, <laughs> like he did at the end of the last episode. There are... Oh, crap! Hmm. Let's save. Let's save over that. Okay. Now, how exactly are they talking about exchange points? There's three different places. We know that. So is that what they're talking about? I'm going to assume that this is kind of what they're talking about. You know, there's Mount Akikura, Aosagi Island, and uh, Hokkaido. That's the only place I remember. Some, some place in Hokkaido. So I'm assuming that's what they're talking about. Yeah. I don't know why I'm overthinking this. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Because he's only, I mean, he only makes two trips, but there's three points that he, yeah, I mean, he goes there, then there. That's two trips. And then, I mean, he goes, but then he goes directly back, though, don't he? He goes, dun, dun, dun. But anyway, yeah, just three places, so I'm, I'm guessing that's what they're meaning. Yeah, I'm, I might be trying to overthink that. I'm going to, I'm going to stop overthinking. There are three exchange points. We never transferred back and forth between two points. Okay, yeah. I'm just trying to overthink it. We kept turning around and around between three. If not, then I can't explain how the third personality intervened between me and Kokoro. The phenomenon we were dragged into is a space-time transfer. An area at a point in time completely changes places with another area at another point in time. Personality exchange is all about each consciousness simply remaining tied to a fixed point, a fixed place and picking the picking the empty container that comes around. If we assume that another personality exists based on this model, then it'd be logical to think that the transfers do not occur between two points, but three. When explained in order, it's like this. Before that, let's define a recurrent concept. From now on, I'll refer to the third personality shrouded in mystery as Alpha. An alias, an appellative to call the third personality. What? Crap is an appellative. Is that a relative that you just want to repel, repel? No, so that doesn't make any sense. Just as my name is Yukido Satoru and Kokoro's name is Fuyukawa Kokoro, I said the name of the third personality is Alpha. Okay. He's Alpha. Furthermore, to simplify things, I make use of the following abbreviations Kokoro's body equals K's body. Kokoro's consciousness, Kokoro. Third body, Alpha's body. Alpha's consciousness, Alpha. Space contained in the sphere of radius 110 uh, meter centered on sphere, sphere area. Space contained in the sphere of radius 110 meter centered on the shelter cabin, shelter cabin area. He's being very creative with these names. The third, uh. <laughs> The third location, which is a sphere, or the shelter cabin, is the third location. The space contained in the sphere of radius 110 uh, meters centered on the third location. The third area. <laughs> I remember I, was, I did a, uh, did a, uh, in speech class, we had to talk about something or other, uh, and I picked uh, pick Stonehenge. I remember being kind of sarcastic because, like Stonehenge went through different le di different phases, and they called them 
Stonehenge 1, Stonehenge 2, Stonehenge 3, Stonehenge 4, and Stonehenge 5. It's like, whoa, those names. Don't use up too much creativity there. Leave some for something else. <laughs> I mean, not that you really have to. I mean, if you do, I guess it make, it can make it too confusing. Let's face it, I don't need to be too confused. It's already happening. The region surrounding the third area is the third region. This is a temporary name that acts as a counterpart of Aosagi Island and Mount Akikura. The fact our time in each area being teleported is restricted to 33 minutes. 33 minute rule. Very different from the 5 second rule. Let's begin this thing. Just what kind of phenomenon is this annoying space time transfer? Let's start off with removing the time jump from the equation and focusing on the space transfer. Judging from the records, my body is used uh, by us three in the following order. Me, Kokoro, Alpha, me, Kokoro, Alpha. Simply said, my body, after being operated by me, is operated by Kokoro, then operated by Alpha. Then operated by me, operated by Kokoro, operated by Alpha, and so on. Of course, the same kind of thing happens to Kay's body and Alpha's body. Does it though? Because, uh. That's kind of the confusing thing though. Nobody at the shelter cabinet said, Well, Kokoro, sometimes you act really crazy. I mean, sometimes you're like, No, really, I'm a dude. But you never go like, I'm gonna stab somebody. You know, don't th you don't go that crazy. You don't go full crazy. Just kind of crazy. So, it's, I mean, it, yeah, that's been a, that's been one reason why I've been thinking that nobody has been. Kokoro hadn't been getting a third uh, personality. I might be wrong though. Maybe it's a very similar personality to her. I don't know. remember them mentioning anything like that. They could have. I could be forgetting something, but I don't think they have. This time, let's use the point of view of my consciousness and see how I move between each body. My consciousness is always, no matter when, at Aosagi Island. My bound consciousness crawls into an empty container, a body, existing in the area currently on Aosagi Island. If you turn over the above sequence, you get my body, Alpha's body, K's body, my body, Alpha's body, K's body. Let's rephrase it to make it easier to follow. In short, my consciousness transfers from my body to Alpha's body, then to K's body. Then to my body to Alpha's body to K's body, and so on. Needless to say, Kokoro and Alpha transfer in the same order. The, tra <laughs> the transitions all come down to this. When my consciousness is in Alpha Alpha's body, Kokoro is in my body, and Alpha is in K's body. Yeah, that's... That's what's confusing me. That doesn't seem right. My consciousness is in K's body, Kokoro is in Alpha's body, and Alpha is in my body. When my consciousness is back in my body, Kokoro is in her own body, and Alpha returns to his body. The areas are teleported as follows. When the Sphere area in Mount Akira, uh, when the Sphere area is in Mount Akira, the shelter cabin is in the third region, and the third area is, in, is transported to Aosagi Island. In the Sphia area is in the third region, the shelter cabin is in, uh, in Aosagi Island, and the third area is transported to Mount Akira. When the Sphia area is back at Aosagi Island, the shelter cabin is in Mount Akira, and the third area returns to the third region. Three consciousnesses and three bodies, three regions and three areas are tossed around like this. By the way, if you apply the 33 minute rule to it, this is what you get. Time my consciousness controls Alpha's body, the time Kokoro controls my body, and the time Alpha controls K's body, 33 minutes. The time my consciousness controls Kokoro's body, the it's 33 minutes again, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. The time my consciousness controls my body, the time is however, yeah. That was feeling very I know Sautru likes to uh just really put things out there very clearly. I was getting a, real, a bit redundant <laughs> repeating it so much. 
This is everything I've discovered about the space-time transfer. This is how the 33 minute time gaps are generated. There's still something missing. There's still four obscure po obscure points. Mystery number one. Did notice the existence of a third area because I believed a Coco had written down. This is what her message said on the 12th. 107 p.m. transfer to Sphia. 140 return to the shelter cabin. 603 transfer to Sphia. 636 return to the shelter cabin. 733 transfer to Sphia. In contrast, these are the times I noted down. 107, transfer to shelter cabin. 140, return to Sphia. Transfer to shelter cabin. Return to Sphia. What's that gonna say? I don't know what time. Dot, uh, dash, dash, dot, dot, dash, dash, PM indicates that it was impossible for me to check what the time was. This is when I saw the shadow holding a knife when the lights went out. I had no time to look at my watch. Of course he had time to look at his watch. Whoa, whoa, you're about to kill me, but I gotta look at my watch here. Cool. Stab away. Hey. Science stops from no nothing, even murder. The times in Kokoro's message and the ones I measured match perfectly. That's why I was under the wrong impression. When I'm at the shelter cabin, Kokoro is, here, is at Sphia. That wasn't the case. It was actually always when I'm at the shelter cabin, Kokoro is in the third area. Then when was Kokoro at Sphia? I was in the third area at the time, which means one list of times, either Kokoro's or mine, is incorrect. And the incorrect one is Kokoro's. How do I know this? When I compare them to the times displayed on the record, it becomes pretty obvious. According to the videos, these are the correct times. 12.34 p.m. transfer to Sphia. 5.30 p.m. transfer to Sphia. Obviously, there are no cameras in Shell's cabin. Did, did her watch maybe get screwed up or something in a plane crash or... It was planned there. Maybe it was planned there to be to, to be ran at halftime or something. Yes, her uh, her watch only works during the middle parts of football games. Uh, to work it half the time. You know what I'm talking about. Like, for yeah, you, you you know what I'm talking about. I, I don't know how to word it. Obviously, there are no cameras in the shelter cabin. Therefore, I can only find the times Coco transferred it to Sphia. But that's enough. Let's compare them with the times of the transfers to Sphia Kokoro wrote down. Times Kokoro wrote are 1.07 p.m. 6.03 p.m. But the actual times are 12.34 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. A systematic error. Times recorded on the messages are off by 33 minutes. Because of this, the 33 minute gap Spanish. They don't know how this happened. Why did Kokoro commit this error? This is the first mystery. Hmm. Hattori is definitely a mystery too. When consciousness went into Kokoro's body, I immediately noticed it. I was feeling out of place, and it was simple to understand that the one reflected in the mirror wasn't me. Also, I could freely control her body. I could move, talk, and essentially make full use of my five senses. And yet, when I was in Alpha's body, I felt nothing. At least I don't remember anything. It was probably the same for Kokoro. Why? Why did Kokoro not ever observe anything through Alpha's eyes? Walking around, touching anything, eating something, hearing sounds, smelling. Why couldn't we do any of that? My memory simply skip over it and go straight to the shelter cabin as if Alpha's body never existed. Doesn't make any sense. This concludes the second mystery. If they if they know what's gonna happen there, maybe they could like Hey Alpha! It's about time for the transfer. Oh man. Okay, get it over with. Clunk. Okay, Alpha's unconscious. Get ready to bring him. <laughs> Mystery number three. The third is about where and when the third region exists. Where in the world is it? And when was it dragged into the space time transfer? Osagi Island, January 2012. Mount Akira, January 2011. What about the third area? Since Aosagi Island and Mount Akakura exist at different points in time, it's natural to assume the third region exists in the past or in the future. I don't 
no. The past or the future, that seems a little bit too narrow. I think there's got to be at least a third or fourth option there. Sorry, I'm so sarcastic. <laughs> if I can pinpoint its location in time, I'll be able to draw closer to the ident identity of Alpha. Maybe there's... What'd be really weird is if, uh... It's like back in prehistoric times and this random point in the third one, which it's not random, we know that now. Because the last episode, but if it was, it's a random point, like he's kind of summarizing. Maybe that's why he couldn't, maybe... Maybe a dinosaur don't have the brains to be able to remember stuff, you know, like a human would. <laughs> that would be a really strange twist to put on it. Last mystery is about Alpha themselves. Who is Alpha? The consciousness transfers into three bodies while chasing after Alpha. However, I've never caught up with them. When I finally arrive at the third area, Alpha runs to the shelter cabin. When the shelter cabin, Alpha evades by going to Spia. If you think about it, Alpha is very close is a very close existence to me. But I can't guess their true colors. Speaking of what I know, it's all the evil they did running ar around in my body. Alpha killed Inamoto, plunged themselves into the bathtub, drank up the DMT and mal inhibitor, and made a mess of the living area. Everything was done after Kokoro had left my body and right before I'd returned to my body. The Alpha personality that wedged itself between Kokoro and me is at the root of every calamity and the true cr criminal. Incidentally, I wonder why they did those things. What's their motive? Scheming to injure my body and merrily butchering Inamoto's corpse? What are the reasons? The fourth mystery, Alpha. Strangely enough, I didn't feel any anger towards this unknown en entity. Rather, I was fascinating, fascinated by their mystique. There's scheming to injure my body, but does Alpha really have some sort of goal? About merrily butchering Inamoto's corpse too? Was was the person conscious of what they were doing? Whimsical and chaotic, the results of an instant child at play. Began to realize Alpha's identity, if only vaguely. At any, at any rate, with this I can say I proved Kokoro's and my innocence, right? Let's be relieved about that one. Yet in a corner of my heart, a fragment of discomfort still clung. A feeling I couldn't identify, but it made me feel sick. Can't stop feeling uneasy about Alpha in the third area. Can't afford to lose sleep over it. I have another important errand to run. That is rescuing the refugees in the shelter cabin. Present time, 4.09 a.m. Space-time transfer is approaching moment by moment. To change the mood, I brewed another cup of coffee and gulped it down. I left the cup on the console. A map was next to it, the same map of Japan I saw when I came in this room for the first time. Thinking it might come in use later, I thrust it into my pocket. Hmm. Monitors lined up along the wall, reflecting the current situation in every room. I'm definitely assuming I made the right choice since that time. Because that was a lot more um, stuff than it was before. Nothing was wrong with the other three inmates. After quickly checking on them, I left the damn room. Ooh, it's the third area. Oh. Okay. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead in this episode here. And, uh, wherever it... We'll go ahead in it here. Uh, the next one should be better progress than last time. So I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and save this. Actually, let, let's let's do it in this one just just to be safe. Let's be safe, okay? Do sincerely hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next. Farewell there.